Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Mike Rainey. To my left, Kaut Anjala. Hey there, pal. To my other left, Jacob Furman Matera. Hey. Danny Dubs, welcome back, baby. Man, we are... Furman, you're rubbing off on everybody, dude. <laughs> it's We're carrying on. It's not me. My dead Italian Aunt Pat, who I'm not going to channel right now, would say that you put the Maloiks on us. The what? The Maloiks. <laughs> the Maloiks. Like bad juju. In what language? Uh, Italian, you fucking dickhead. Aren't you Italian? That doesn't sound like an Italian word I've ever heard. Maloiks? It, it's, I'm, it's, an, it's an Italian thing. Yeah, it sounds like Italian slang. Like gabagool. <laughs> Sounds like a sketch from a Dr. Demento cassette. <laughs> <laughs> you see what you're doing to him, Furman? <laughs> I'm sorry, Cow <Count> Donjala. <laughs> All right, boys. Listen. I feel terrible because like I was blasting music of tonight's stinker when the guys walked in. And John's like, oh yeah, I know a ton about this guy. So I think we'll see what I remember. I guarantee you're going to remember a lot because you were you seem very knowledgeable. I certainly enjoyed the show and definitely fell into a Wikipedia hole. But, mm-hmm. you know, we don't know exactly who we're going to be talking about yet. All right. So. I think there's a couple things that I found that you might not know. I guarantee there are dozens of facts <laughs> I'm about to learn. <laughs> All right. You want to flip that coin to see if we can actually do this? What's the opposite of a sponge? Because that's me. I leave here forgetting every single <laughs> fucking word you said. Here we go. A rock. Mm, keep thinking while I flip All the right. coin, you fucking asshole. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to flip this. If I win, we're going to talk about an impractical joker. If you win, we're going to talk about you know who. Ah, it's fucking you know who. All right. We're doing it, baby. We're I'm doing- so excited, man. I, I'm excited to hear what you know about this guy so you could share that with me. And Innocent. An innocent man wronged by the fucking government. Cal, I'm going to ask you to please. I wonder what the fucking bootlickers out there think of this guy. (laughs) All these fucking modern (laughs) bootlickers were probably once standing with, may I say his name? Yeah. David Koresh, (gasps) leader of the Branch Davidians. Imagine having a fucking religion after your last names or your first name. Damn, he farted big time. Was it you? I wasn't me, no. It wasn't me. Oh, man. There may be a fart trapped in that couch from the live stream that we just did with Dr. Um, Vincent Van Jarlsberg. Yeah, okay. So if you haven't watched that yet on our Patreon page, check out the live stream we did with the premier cheese fucker expert in the world. Learned a lot. Even even the county. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. So you ready to get into some David Koresh? I sure am. This is exciting. It is, man. Did you know that that wasn't his birth name? Um, I believe that, yeah. How about you, Furman? No, I had no idea. He was born Vernon Wayne Howell. Vernon Furman, you guys could have been fucking pals, dude. Damn. You guys could have jammed, jammed together. <laughs> could have jammed together. <laughs> he was quite the musician, man. Dude, that the song, song that I was playing, playing, there's a song that rocks. David Koresh has. He's got a bunch on the internet, but if you go on YouTube, and um, Danny, can we put this at the end of the episode? Yeah. Shout out That'd to awesome. David Koresh's SoundCloud page. <laughs> yeah, is it copyright? He went up to that big SoundCloud in the sky. <laughs> it's probably copyrighted. We just can't yeah. monetize it. Yeah. Okay. We don't be doing that anyway. But I was blasting David Koresh's song called "Man Mad Man in Waco," and it's a really fucking cool '80s montage song. Dude, it could have been in Rocky Four. Yeah, it should have been. There's a mad mad fighting Ivan Drago. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I, I write Italian fight music. We're doing a shot for shot remake. <laughs> I, I do it on Fiverr. <laughs> Any Italian dude that needs to hit his wife, I just write him a quick ditty. <laughs> there you go, Vincenzo. Knock her out. <laughs> That's not funny for me. You shouldn't say that. But dude, his I name- was laughing at the name Vincenzo for the record. Okay, now the other thing you said. <laughs> that was my grandfather's name. I wasn't- Vincenzo Furman? Yeah. <sighs> oh my fucking great God. Yeah. Did what one of your name. grandparents lose bets? <laughs> <laughs> it appears so, Mike. Yeah. Well, dude, it's kind of hard to to surpass fucking Vernon Wayne Howe. You know what they called him for short? Vern, Vernie. Damn, dude, that sounds like an like a like a really established author. Vernie Howell? No, not Vernie <laughs> Howell. <laughs> Vernon Wayne Howe, like a like a poet in that sixties area. V W Howe. Mm. Uh, v W is already Beatnik. a car. 
He was beating some of his wives, I'll tell you that much, Jake. <laughs> Did he put hands on women? I know he was at least verbally abusive to a lot of them. He was probably a rapist, probably a child molester. These are some heavy-handed accusations you're just throwing at the guy. Yeah, I, I did open this up with uh, innocent on all accounts, so maybe we'll edit yeah, that might. part out. <laughs> yeah. uh, or just take it easy on the guy, you know? <laughs> now, here's the deal. like The information that come that's come out about David Koresh, yeah. it's either from people who have left the Branch Davidian compound or the FBI or the ATF agents that were on hand that day. Okay, There's very few people that left the compound, though, right? Yeah. There are some. There's a guy named uh, David Thibodeau. Who? Played by Kieran Culkin in the movie. Is that really him? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Or it might be the other Culkin, not uh, Macaulay? Rory, perhaps. Dude, maybe he should have set the, the compound up like Home Alone when the agents <laughs> came in. <laughs> It'd still be standing. Yeah. <laughs> Leave the tank, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> what they lacked in Rube, Rube Goldberg machines they made up for in <laughs> weapons. But what I'm trying to say is uh, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. And I do believe that he was probably having sex with with children i think they Ooh. allude to a youngish maybe 15 or 16 year old girl or yeah, well, are you saying he, younger in the in it's, the it's uh, rumored that show that i watched he he sexually assaulted because there's no way that you know even they would want to call it like a spiritual magic or whatever if you're having sexual relations with someone who's 10 you're sexually assaulting them so it's it's rumored that he sexually assaulted someone as young as 10 Ew. It's your boy. I really do love this guy, but fuck. <laughs> this is not looking good on me. They made him look like a fucking hero in the show I watched. Sorry, what kind of propaganda John. did I see? Now, here's the deal. Like, when he was 19, this isn't as bad as, like, the stuff he, he later went on to his rumor to do, but when he was 19, he did get a 16-year-old pregnant. Now, I don't know if that's, I don't know. It's normal for the time or? Not nearly as bad as the 10-year-old right. girl. So we're going to backtrack a little bit. Relative to this point, his dad was named Bobby Howell and his mom was Bonnie Sue Clark. What and where was he baby? born? In Houston, Texas. So not far from Waco. No. Yeah. The dad was 20. The mom was 14. Oh, my God. Yeah. He was born into it. <laughs> Stunting like his daddy. Mm-hmm. And ironically, his father was a carpenter. Hmm. I say ironically because he viewed himself as the second coming of Christ. Of course. I implied that. Okay. I inferred you. it. You implied it. Oh, thank you. You inferred it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not know the difference between those words? I was just still thinking of the pregnant 16-year-old. <laughs> 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 I'm, 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 oh. I'm a chapter behind you guys. So go, keep going. <laughs> now, eventually, like yeah, his parents were together for like two years, but then the dad bailed on the mom. The mom ended up getting re- remarried. And David Koresh says that the stepdad was a real motherfucker and would beat his ass. He he described it as getting his tail whomped. W h o m p e d. I like that. Yeah, that is kind of fun. All right, I'm back on Koresh's side. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably gonna be on the side for this one too, but it hasn't been substantiated. But there are rumors that he was gang raped by his cousins. What? I think the show I watched started. Right after that, because they did not show that part. Man. In, in addition to the whompings, he had uh, other a bunch thi- of wapings as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm on your side and his side now. <laughs> but uh, he was dyslexic, so he got teased a lot in school, and he got put in the special education classes, which did not bode well for him. What do you think they nicknamed him once he got in the special ed classes? Uh... Ver, ho, horny, horny bitch. Furman. Oh man, uh, horny Verney would be pretty good. Horny, yeah, horny Verney. Yeah, that would. You're one. basically stealing what I just fucking said. Ah, damn Make it. up your okay. own thing. All right. Uh, On the spot. Vernon. What was the middle name? Wayne. S- Wayne. Wayney, no brainy. Joy and Wayne. Pop, pop, pop it up. <laughs> lost he me went, on that one. The children in his school refer to him as Mr. Retardo. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right. Now I'm on the children's side. <laughs> we had the same nickname. 
<laughs> I wonder if he was like, please, my father's Mr. Retardo. Call me Vernie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but these kids are sad. Please call me Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his mouth on the conveyor belt eating the chocolates before Lucy can even get to him. <laughs> All right, so in ninth grade, he's like, fuck this shit. I'm not going through school anymore. Old fucking Vernie Howe drops out. When he's 19, he gets 16 year old pregnant, John. All right. Still on the side? Not on this one. But did he get a GED? No. Does that make it better he, if he fucked a 16 no, year old? No, no, no. <laughs> just, you know, I was worried about his education. Again, chapter behind. He got his PED. Oh. <laughs> All right, Jake. Are you happy now? <laughs> now you happy that had to come out of me in order for us to proceed with this shit? Furman is happy. <laughs> yeah, he got a 16 year old pregnant, and her father would not allow him to see the child after it was born. So. Which I think he was, I don't know if he was cool with it because his whole life was getting abandoned because his mom, she had bailed on him for a few years, gave him to the grandmother, then the grandmother gave him back, I believe when she remarried. So he's got abandonment issues. After after he, he drops out of high school, he just starts plowing through the Bible and just starts learning as much as he can, fucking spouting it verbatim. So it sounds as though he's really... What are you about to say for me? I said it's better that he's plowing through the Bible than another 16-year-old. Am I right, John? Than the sophomore class of Houston High School, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, so he's he's memorizing as much of the Bible as he can, and he's, he's starting to get in the church. He joins the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. Now, when he's there, a, a member of the church says, David Koresh never had a thought above his belt. Oh, horny. <laughs> Do you think one of his pickups line was like, pickup lines was like, damn, girl, you raised me up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for <Yeah. laughs> Now, one of the funny things that he believed, which quickly made him fall out of favor with other churchgoers, was that he believed that the Holy Spirit was a woman and had huge knockers. Very specific. She's got double D's. It's what you guys don't understand. <laughs> it's two D's in God. <laughs> and That's then, the Trinity. <laughs> it's her beautiful face. And, he's two <laughs> and then he really fell out of favor with the church when he knocked up the preacher's daughter. Oh, Ooh. Textbook. Now, in his mind, he's starting to become very manipulative. There's a lot of shit that he does that reminds me of our buddy Charles Manson. Okay. But however, I couldn't find any evidence that he read how to win friends and influence people. Hmm. But he also wasn't a textbook serial killer. I guess Manson wasn't either, though. So yeah. You know what, Mike? We yes, could probably me. go through Texas. I mean, I know they have probably have a very small reading list for school, and I know he did drop out. But we could probably see if there was one on the curriculum how to f- win friends and influence people. Is that on any school's curriculum? It it's be. probably on the curriculum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, so so he really falls out of favor when it's becoming so a. He gets booted basically after. Well, he's been he knocks up the preachers. He's been well, yeah, he's been hot and heavy for this girl for a while, and then he's he's he doesn't knock her up as far as I know. I think he expresses his desire to do so to the preacher's father because people start their rumors start circulating that they're porking damn and he eventually reveals to the preacher saying like look god's told me that i have to knock your daughter up and there's nothing anybody can do about it because it's god's word yes body of christ (laughs) (laughs) religion fucking rules if you use it right dude yeah it's like law yeah yeah sorry Sorry, I have to fuck your hot big titted daughter, but <laughs> God told me in a dream. So, yeah, sorry, bro, but the body of Christ is actually hourglass shaped. <laughs> you know what I mean, buddy? Know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> I know. <laughs> there you go, dude. Yeah. I was waiting for us to get some gym in here. So he gets booted, and um, dude, he ends up going out to LA. So at this time, he's early like 20s. 20. Yeah, okay. he's 20, like 20 or 21. He goes out to L.A. to make it as a musician. And as you guys heard from the song, he's pretty fucking good. 
He's a singer songwriter, plays yeah. guitar. So rock and bod. <laughs> He is kind of handsome too. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's got a lot going for him. Yeah, I mean, he. he I think feel like he chose a look that mm-hmm. uh, was a classic kind of nerdy look, but maybe I think at the time that was a and like a John Cruck haircut and and big glasses. You know, I think chicks still wanted to fuck guys that look like that. True. In the early nineties, late eighties, I could see that man. Jake, would you fuck guys that look like David Koresh? <laughs> What would it take for you? Oh, man. Uh, live Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> 2,000 subscribers. 75 sure. viewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all it takes. Dude, I, I found some uh, pretty fun tidbits of information about his time in L.A. Initially, he was out there for, I think, about two years, dicking around, getting gigs, just hanging out there, just trying to make a name for himself. It didn't really take off. However, he did make a lasting impression on people, and he did lay some roots out there. Even when he went back to Texas, he would routinely go back out to Southern California just to chill in L.A., and he even kept residences out there. And from donations that people who ended up joining the Branch Davidian uh, cult, they would give him money, and he used part of that to pay for – to keep these houses afloat and keep chicks in houses so that when he went out to California, he would have – He had a little concubine situation. This sounds almost close to, if dare I say, a Joe Rogan. Going out to L.A., making it, and then moving to Texas and setting up a new life. Yes, who could life. forget David Koresh's $300 million deal with Spotify? <laughs> Have you heard that banger? Yeah, he's probably going to deal with Godify now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so when he gets back to, to Waco in uh, 1981, he comes back. Because shit's not really working out in L.A. And he did. people did like him out there. There was one guy. I, I read an L.A. Times article where they were asking people who knew of him and who still lived there. There was one guy who said that he would lure younger musicians in by either giving them clothes, giving them food, or giving them instruments to play. And people were – he was kind to them, so they kind of took to him. And they said he just had something about him. Again, like it instantly reminded me of Manson. They said – Within 30 seconds of meeting him, he could have you crying or laughing. Dang. Which, uh, Furman, I think you could do too, considering how we just watched you deep throat that brick of sharp cheddar cheese. That is not true, Mike. <laughs> you know it. I know it. That is not true. Well, we'll let people who subscribe to the Patreon find out for themselves. Thank you for putting this out there. <laughs> I did not. I'm not. No, I'm not, I'm not defending it. We didn't even say you ate it with your mouth, buddy. You shoved it up your asshole. Jake may $4 have four dollars to say it on fucking live TV. I don't. Don't go so fast now because Jake may have inadvertently turned our Patreon into an OnlyFans. <laughs> so we'll find out when that we hear from uh, Patreon HQ. But dude, he ends up going back to Waco, and um, he's tooling around. He's still got a band going. He's fucking hanging out with local musicians, and they're they're all into the church, and they start hanging out at the at the Branch Davidian compound. Wait, that wasn't his own religion that he made initially. No. Whoa. So he took it over. He like Napoleon. Yeah. Wow. So the Branch Davidians, they're an offshoot of another group called the Shepherd's Rod. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the shepherds wee, 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 wee. <laughs> Koresh invented that one so the um and i i don't know if i mentioned but um he had been excommunicated from the seventh day adventist when they kicked him out of the church yeah. they didn't just tell him to leave he was officially excommunicated right. dude and one funny thing and i don't know if he did this intentionally but the branch davidians um well i'm sorry the shepherd's rod they were excommunicated from the seventh day adventist during the 1930s as well so they shared that in common. So that might have been something that ingratiated him to the Branch Davidians. Yeah. Mike, do you know what got them excommunicated? More times than not, it was showing them that you could suck your own dick. Huh. Sometimes there were some jokers when they would say body of Christ, they would say gay man. Simple shit like that could get you tossed, Jake. Like you know, they really, you know, I was doing that shit in grade school, baby. <laughs> I love gay men. <laughs> Danny, that was we found the clip. <laughs> so um, the Branch of Vidians were were founded by a guy named Benjamin Roden in 1978. 
and they had their headquarters at a place called Mount Carmel, which is the compound that you see on the news. Sounds delicious. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. But – other other people, other churchgoers that even weren't even a part of the Branch Davidians would go there to chill, to play music, to hang out, and to just love Christ, Jake. Damn. So the compound that everything happened in was Mount Carmel. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. We, we only have Hershey Park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go take over Hershey Park and start a religion. <laughs> So Benjamin Rowan, I'm sorry, I might have said he founded the church in 1978. Uh, he actually died in 1978. Oh. So Koresh gets there in 1981, and at this point, the Branch Davidians were left to uh, Benjamin Rowan's wife, Lois, who at this point was in her late 60s. Now, David just wants wants to take all control of this group from her. So he's like, all right, let me start porking this old bitch. He starts laying the pipe down on fucking 67-year-old fucking Lois Roden. Chewy, the boy love her the Gave her the branch. <laughs> he extended a six-inch olive branch to Lois, <laughs> Lois Griffin. <laughs> Peanut. <laughs> and in, during this time, he's constantly fucking at war with Lois's son, George, who is also a psychotic dickhead. Damn. By 1983, David Koresh is starting to develop his own message, and most of that revolves around him being the Lamb of God and the second coming of Christ. And old lady still alive? She is. She she lasts... All right, so this is 1983. She's alive until 1986. So he's fucking her into her 70s. So wow. put that in your pipe and smoke it, Jake. <laughs> and when it- Got a light? <laughs> That's it. And when did the everything? Ha- I don't want to jump ahead, but what was the nineteen ninety three? Wow, that's crazy because usually women last longer. <laughs> in life or in bed, <laughs> both, <laughs> both, John. <laughs> both my wife and I come in thirteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> we usually say jinx. Don't say anything to, to each other the rest of the night. It's not a healthy relationship. <laughs> There's a vending machine of coke in the bedroom. <laughs> you throw a balled up roll of socks at it to get it to ejaculate one. <laughs> I'm sure there's a different word to use that describes cokes coming out of machines, but ejaculate seems to work. It definitely did in that situation. <laughs> um, all right. So he's, he's tensions are starting to rise between he and the son, George Roden. Now, at this point, George sees him potentially taking over the church. So he's like, all right, I got to put a stop to this. So George tells him with his boys that Koresh and 25 of his followers have to get the fuck out. And they do it at gunpoint. And David doesn't take too kindly up to this. There's a building that George Roden owns that David ends up burning to the ground. And he says, it's not his fault. God made him do it. So he's he's basically gotten kicked out of this church as well with his 25 followers along with his his real wife. He had a bunch of spiritual wives because he couldn't marry more than one woman. So this lady, Rachel Jones, they have a kid together. They end up having, I think, like 13 kids together. So his goal is to have 24 kids total to have um, a specific number of prophets to keep his message, message going long after he's gone. 13 kids together before what year? I think by the time he died, okay, which was 1993. Now, one very fucked up aspect is m- members of the Branch Davidian compound who had left said that he had taken Rachel's younger sister as a child bride. Yeah. Is that the 10-year-old that you spoke of earlier? I don't think it's her. I think she was 13. Okay. Jesus, David, what are you fucking... You're killing me over here, pal. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be on your fucking side. Dude, so they go to um so David and all his boys that got kicked out, they go to Palestine, Texas. Sounds biblical. Damn. You know, pretty strange. And once he once he's fucking relegated to Palestine, which is 90 miles away from Waco, he's like, fuck it, I'm gonna travel a little bit. He ends up going over to Israel. Now, when he's over in Israel. Like Israel, Israel? Yeah, not Israel, Israel Texas. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, he spent yeah. 40 days there. And he he heads back. to Tel Aviv, Arkansas. <laughs> but no, he goes to Israel, ass Israel. Damn. And he's meeting all kinds of people over there. So he starts recruiting people from Israel 
people that are from the UK, people that are from Australia, people yeah. that are from America to come back to the compound. It's brilliant. Global. To leave where they are in Israel to come back there. Now, one thing that he's doing, too, is he's convincing these people to forego all their possessions and hand them over to the Branch Davidians. Wow. And it was rumored, too, that he was able to finance a lot of his travel and a lot of his um, his money to pay for these houses in different cities by fucking draining this Hawaiian millionaire dry. You really just did a jerking, yeah. milking a man <laughs> motion. <laughs> The guy had two dicks. <laughs> that was him adjusting the lay. <laughs> so, I mean, he's he's got money to fucking travel on. And in 1986, Lois Rodden dies. dies. Now, basically, she was the last straw that was, like, preventing, like, him from coming back. I'm sorry. Like, there was communication that was kept up. And um, I think George drew the line in the sand saying he couldn't come back. But Lois still kept in communication with him. Now that she's gone, he doesn't stand a chance to come right. back. And on top of that, too, George fucking hates him and he wants to kill him. So David's really making a strong push to come back to the Branch Davidian compound. And this is 1987. So George Roden, he's a psychopath, too. He sent a message out to David. He's like, all right, dude, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Now, David's trying to rat on him to get police to go to the compound. He's saying all, he's got all kinds of illegal shit there. He's saying that he's abusing kids. And he, he ends up getting, um, he he tries to get authorities to go to the compound by telling them this, which isn't exactly a lie. George Roden challenges David Koresh to a competition where the winner gets control of the Branch Davidian compound. What do you think the competition involves? Wrestling. Nope. Playing guitars and shooting guns. No. The winner of the competition would have to reanimate a corpse. After they won? All right, stalemate. <laughs> so George Roden actually digs up a body and brings it to the fucking comp. He's insane. Dude. Brings it to the compound. And that's a little outlandish even for David Koresh. So David's like, all right, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to try to reanimate this corpse, which I think the competition would have been called Weekend at Vernie's. <laughs> he's like all right i'm not going to reanimate this corpse but here's what i'm going to do i'm going to call the cops and say like look this motherfucker dug up a body and he's got it at the compound brilliant but, yeah it is a smart move but in the meantime he's like you know what fucker we're going to go there and we're going to fucking take shit over so he rounds up all of his boys and george roden and his boys are expecting david koresh and his boys to show up so when they finally get there there's a gun battle george roden um gets shot in the hand and David Koresh and his boys end up getting brought up on attempted murder charges. What? They go to court. All of his boys end up being found not guilty. However, David Koresh, they declare a mistrial. So he gets away with it. They get away with a mistrial. They don't prosecute him again. Okay. And shortly thereafter, George Roden ends up, there's a guy named Wayman Dale Adair who George Roden puts an ax in his skull. Jesus Christ. Because um, this guy, Wayman Dale Adair, professes that he is the Messiah. So George Roden's like, what the fuck? Dude. I just got rid of this fucking guy who shot me in the hand. Now I got this fucking dickhead coming and saying he's the Dude. Messiah. So George Roden puts an axe in his head and puts an end to that. He Roden's playing like Messiah whack-a-mole. Like, for that, George Roden ends up getting sent to a psychiatric hospital. Now, at this point, there's nobody in charge at fucking at the Branch Davidian compound. Ooh. All of a sudden, they hear an electric guitar off in the distance. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, one funny note about the electric guitars is one of the guys that became one of uh, Koresh's disciples was an airbrush artist. So Koresh had him airbrush all the guitars with biblical scenes on them. Nice. Definitely. Pretty, pretty fucking sick. cool. Yeah. So. He's back in favor with John now, Jake. Love that guy. For now. All right, well. Except for his prior digressions yeah. that I don't agree with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so 19... All right, oh, wait, I didn't get to this. All right, so with George Roden out of the way, the property is, is about to be foreclosed upon because of back taxes. So old uh, Koresh is like, you know, what if I paid those back taxes? They're like, yeah, dude, it's fucking all yours. Uh, but yeah, wouldn't it be tax free because it's religion? I don't know if if all the buildings on the property 
were considered part of the religion. Yeah. All right. So he's able to get the compound for paying off the back taxes. Okay. So he gets that. He's now in total control of the Branch Davidian compound. Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel Center. And the year is? 1990. Okay. He ta- he, at this point, he now changes his name from Vernon Howe to David Koresh. Was he already being called David Koresh, or he just does a full... He came up with that. So where David Koresh comes from, David comes from King David of David and Goliath fame. And is that where Davidians comes from as well? Probably, yeah. So okay. I guess it fits. I thought Branch Davidian was from David, David Koresh's name. Like named after him. No, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, the show yeah, doesn't yeah, cover... So. The show starts when he's already taken over. Right. Well, it starts with Ruby Ridge. Okay. And then... He's already established the Waco compound. Yeah, it was not. So he named himself, I guess, after that. You know, it'd be like, you know, Muhammad Ali opening up a lunch spot and he would name himself Muhammad after Muhammad Cheese. (laughs) You follow what I'm saying? Does that make any sense? Uh, More than I'd like it to. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So he gets David from King David of David and Goliath fame. Koresh is a Hebrew word meaning uh, Cypress which was a Persian king, much like my friend John Del Calo here. Ooh. Those sweet Persian eyes. You cannot continue to sit here week after week winking those blinkers at me and not <laughs> expect me to speak on them. <laughs> speak all you want, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so at this point, like I did mention, he he's trying to produce 24 offspring, and his wife is providing, it isn't going to be able to like crank out all those kids for him. You don't say. So what his what what happened was what a weak bitch. <laughs> what his plan is? He's got total control over this fucking place now. What he does is he splits up every couple, and he's in control of when they can see each other, when they can spend time with one another. So he's basically taking on a lot of the women for his spiritual wives. Yeah. Puts in a lot of like funny rules too. So there's only air conditioning in his bedroom. <laughs> he's the only one that could drink beer. He's allowed to have muscle cars. Uh, he's allowed to um, have all the guitars he wants, all the airbrush guitars. He's got a pussy buffet. Meanwhile, the Davidians, they can't have sugar. They can't have processed flour. Um, they cannot have dairy. They cannot have dairy. He says wow. He says that milk is only for babies. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a bottle, Jake? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And another funny thing is um, they're allowed... Uh, specific foods together they can have apples and oranges but they cannot have bananas and oranges together i get it <laughs> <laughs> you'd be a good davidian anybody ever yeah. tell you that no you said no sugar i was like i'm out that's no for me dog <laughs> there was something that one of the guys in that uh, la times article that i'd mentioned one of the guys that knew him in la said um he would do weird shit like warn you against certain things that you shouldn't indulge in and one of them was laughter says, you really got to be careful with laughing too much. I have no idea what that meant. He would have shot me in the head so fast. (laughs) He probably would have. Here's here's another thing that makes me think he would have shot you, Jake. There was another guy that they interviewed who said that um, they brought him before David Koresh. And he's like, would you die for Christ? He's like, "Uh, yeah, I guess. He's like, all right, well, let me ask you this. Would you kill for Christ? The guy's like, no, man, I'm out. So they said at that point, Koresh turned to the guy that brought him and says, why are you bringing me these weak Christians? Whoa. Yeah, imagine having a guy say that to your fucking friend's face. Jesus Christ. Damn. Back on Koresh's side, baby. (laughs) Jake, do you think you would be a weak Christian or do you think you would be willing to die for Christ and kill for him? Die for? Yeah, sure. Kill? Nah. I'm, you know, I'm a man to love. Yeah, I'm willing to chill for Christ. Where Koresh really starts getting in some uh, trouble and really starts raising people's suspicions is um, he starts to get further and further, allegedly, into underage members of the compound. People leave every now and again, and this is where this information service is from. And as more and more people leave the Branch Davidian compound, more allegations surface. Now, the two most prominent allegations which end up bringing the authorities to the compound are that he's abusing kids and he has child brides and but, that he's running guns yes yeah yeah that they're that's how Fact they make number a lot of one money. that i recall from the show <laughs> so apparently they're buying and selling guns 
which I would love to find out like what laws they were circumventing in Texas, which brought that kind of attention. Because when the raid happens, the ATF shows up to the compound before the FBI does. Mm-hmm. So it seems like they're more concerned about the weapon sales and seeing what they have there. Now, I'm wondering if maybe there were like local thefts. I don't recall. Like, like the guns were like their catalytic converter, kind of like at that time. <laughs> yeah, sleeping and like. Yeah, that would probably be yeah. it, man. You think the guns were stolen? I, I or are you saying they were used for thefts? No, I'm saying like I, I have to assume that maybe that's what brought them out because how egregious could gun crimes have to be, gun sales have to be, to get the ATF to come to your property in right. Texas, a place that you were born with a gun in your. In well, not only that, hand. and I'm also thinking of the high regard that the Texans have for land and property. Right. Like, you're not going to fuck with another guy's shit. Yeah. And to, for the ATF to get involved. Well, I mean, I feel like they're, it's looked at like if the Hells Angels was running guns in Texas. You know what I mean? They wouldn't just be allowed to do whatever they wanted with. They still got laws. You know what I mean? And the fact that it's ATF and it's not local Texas authorities that are, you know. It's federal, so they have the power to go in and, and, and just say no. Would you ever consider joining a motorcycle gang? Yes. Which one would you join, the pink ladies? Fuck <laughs> you, you piece of <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> Jake, what about you? I would, yeah. You pink lady material? Uh, yeah, no, I probably not. Um, th- is there a lesser gang? That no, I you got to join the pink ladies, dude. If you're going to be a biker... Yeah. You got to join the Pink Ladies. I'm telling you right now. Are you in or are you out? I'm in. I'm in. I All can right. do it. All right. Good. And here's what the thing is. You don't get a, you don't get an option. We beat you in and sex you in. <laughs> <laughs> we beat you off in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come in my mouth if you want to get in this game. <laughs> Keeps talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned the ATF is the first to come onto the scene. <laughs> I believe in the show they... they uh, that is, that happens after like an anonymous tip. Okay. Like a, a Koresh enemy or somebody that left the compound. Here's what I'm wondering. Phone call. I'm wondering if the guy George Rodden, Roden orchestrated this. Was he still alive at the time? He was. He was just in psychiatric care. Yeah. It might have been him or one of his guys. But how would he have known? I'm sure he's got people visiting him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe. Probably. Branch Davidians was a small collective. Word travels, you know. Dude, just just imagine how angry it would make you to know that your mortal enemy has not only taken over your mother's house, but is airbrushing guitars in there. Dude. <laughs> you fucked my mom, and that pissed me off. But he's <laughs> airbrushing guitars on my property. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the initial raid happens on February 28th, 1993. And that is, an, uh, compared to the last uh, week, it, it's uneventful, correct? No. Uh, initially- Oh, there, wait. Do people die? There are. Didn't you remember the Ice Cube song? Because just like Waco, I could take foe ATF today death. That was the first day for ATF agents. And then the killed. standoff happens for- okay. Yeah, it's 51 days. Yeah, or- months on yeah on uh february 28th 1993 there's four atf agents killed and six branch davidians yeah so right off the bat shit's popping off and he gets shot the first day right and they negotiate uh being allowed to bury the dead and all that mm-hmm. without getting shot right. by the atf and that yep. shit yeah and at this point the fbi hostage team comes in uh one funny thing that i found out about the fbi coming in there so there's the negotiators and then there's the hostage rescue team they're at odds the entire time with one another. Mm-hmm. So the negotiators, they're led by a guy named uh, Byron Sage. And the fucking hostage rescue team apparently fucking hates this guy. So much so that they have to share a fucking outhouse or a porta potty. And they're writing graffiti, um, besmirching Byron Sage's name. And one of the things they write inside the porta potty is Sage is a Davidian. <laughs> <laughs> Was he um, sent there before the raid? I think he might be the guy that's played by John Leguizamo in the show who was like sent They did to, have people like to go undercover. Yeah, he was like, like they were like, yeah, I'm just checking shit out down here. the road and right. then formed a little relationship and then was very much against the tactics that they used. Could have been. You know, he was yeah. trying to intervene in the situation and was ultimately not allowed mm-hmm. to uh try to cool 
the tension, you know. Now that you're saying this, Jake, would you be willing to wear a wire in a cult for us? <laughs> for the Patreon members? Yeah, I would wear a wire. I, I mean, I'm afraid, though, if I go to a cult, I'm not coming back. What do you think you would like most about it? Is it the song, the dance, the pussy? Probably the, just the, the no milk. <laughs> probably the no milk. That's a mm-hmm. nice, enticing thing, trying to cut back. On all my milk intake. <laughs> um, but I think just the camaraderie, you know? That would be nice. This is contagious, infectious in here with us. Imagine just like 400 bros in neutral earth cut tones. Like, man. Everybody wearing the same shoes. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, baby. Yeah. Sketchers. My- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to shop around for your coat. Make sure they got the cool shoes. Yes. Yeah. Some of these motherfuckers have to have Crocs. <laughs> Don't be smart, Crocs. Fucking piece of shit. Uh, I'm sorry. I I guess we can't be Do in the same Do you think cult. there was a cold out there with the light up <laughs> shoes like the LA? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They nice have nice lights. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Well, who, uh, Heaven's Gate, they had the Nikes. Mm-hmm. I wonder if any other cults were just like after they saw that footage in the news where they're just like, ah, fuck. We got to <laughs> step our shoe game up. The cheese perverts had K Swiss. <laughs> 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 so dude even though the fbi is at odds with their two teams that are in there they're still trying to get all these people out and there are times where like they do release some people some women and children get out but there's still a lot of people inside of there and part of the trade-off is that david koresh is allowed to like send out messages and they actually send in a video camera for him to record some things so communication like right, and then that's how anybody's relatives is getting <laughs> Yeah, they're aware that they're okay and that they're doing okay. And um, he's putting on a good front. He's making it seem like he's a good caretaker. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's well cared for. And um, I'm poisoned. Poison in that cup. Killed by liquid death. Man, what an (laughs) ironic name. John, can you hold his ankles behind his head until he's better? (laughs) Quick, we need to waterboard him. (laughs) Ah, We're doing all right. Good. There comes a point, though, toward the end of the siege where David Koresh reneges on the hostages. The amount. Jake, what are you fucking laughing at? <laughs> like, it better not be that word that I just said. <laughs> no, it's not that I'm going to leave that word alone. I'm going to leave that word alone. <laughs> siege? <laughs> All right. So he reneges. Jake. Am I going to be able to finish the sentence where I'm talking about him reneging? Yes. Yes, you are. So Koresh renegs. You are throwing two different pronunciations (laughs) at this point. (laughs) Two distinctly different words I'm hearing. Both pronunciations I've heard. Okay. Okay. But it's just weird when you switch it up so blatantly. I'm still choking <laughs> on water, so I, I can't hear anything. All right. So does anybody know the sign language for renege? Mm-mm. What? Jake, you want to tell us what you think it is? No, I don't. All right. So we're going to proceed. <laughs> so he reneges on his promise. So I'm I- starting to think you don't know any sign language at all. I have communicated with gorillas. I'm actually the person that told Coco that Robin Williams was dead. <laughs> I didn't have to, but yeah, I had did. enough of that gorilla shit. <laughs> to that point, why did they tell that gorilla that Robin Williams was dead? <laughs> they could have just been like, ah, yeah, he'll come to see. He's just making uh, Mrs. Doubtfire too. He's thinking about you a lot. <laughs> Some people are just evil, Mike. Although that would be good, especially if like the gorilla embarrasses you, because you know like to, they're very smart animals. Yeah, and the fuck around, I guarantee you, they're sexually aggressive. <laughs> so they will bend you over a table and pretend to fuck you. They know pretend. jokes. They do. They, they know got how jokes. To do a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite gorilla joke? Obviously, bending over your trainer and and you know. <laughs> Everything but doing everything but you know. I like the old tossing the the doo doo. That is a good one. That's a good one. A classic. <laughs> Do you think they had promised to toss it and then renege Jake? 
Possibly. All right. Now I can move on. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting... Uh, all right. It lasts for 51 days. By the end of the siege, uh, U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno gives the okay for them to to storm the fucking compound. Janet Re what? <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Janet Retardo gives the okay <laughs> for the FBI to go ahead and storm the compound. And they go in there, guns blazing. They also fucking like start plowing through yeah, with, with a fucking flaming, tanks. Flaming uh like a flame throwing tank. Now here's where shit gets fucking weird and there's a lot of back and forth. So the FBI seems to think that they said they actually sent in milk for the kids in a crate and they said the the crate was bugged with a wire. They said the part of the reason, uh, even though Janet Reno gave it the go ahead, the specific time that they chose to go ahead and um and raid the place was relative to something they heard on the wire with Branch Davidians talking about setting the place on fire. Hmm. Now that's something that um uh, Steve Thibodeau, I think his name was, refutes. Yeah, I mean, uh, what was their plan after that? To burn alive? I, I don't know. Like, I, I, yeah. I could see, because he's enough of an egomaniac to convince everybody to kill themselves just to spite the government. However, I also think that the FBI just wanted it to fucking end, and they're willing to just fucking... They're throwing a tear gas, too, and when the tear gas comes in, fires are being set, gunfire is being, being exchanged, mm -hmm. and I think, all told... Uh, 76 Branch Davidians were killed. Out of how many were in there? 77. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David Koresh came down the inflatable sliding board. So he was okay. I should know this, but I don't, John. But there were I, over 100 before the siege started, right? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people did get out. Yeah. And the guy, um, or not Steve Thibodeau, David Thibodeau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was his name. He was able to escape through a hole in the building, mm -hmm. but even so, like he was burning as he was exiting the yeah. building. <sighs> he said that he could hear his hair crackling from being on fire, which also made him hungry for s'more shake. I get it. I mean, yeah, we've all been to a bonfire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of note, too, twelve Branch Davidians were prosecuted for fighting with law enforcement on that day where the siege ended. Haven't they been through enough? Well, ones that had already been released or ones that escaped the... That were found still alive as the building the burned to the... Like, the whole fucking place burned to the ground. Yeah. One thing I didn't know that I learned while researching this was there was a pretty nice pool out back. You can see that in the movie. Yeah, you I don't know about that. I shouldn't say nice, but it is like a big pool. It's a big concrete pool. Was there like two diving boards, like a small one, and then a really tall one that was just David's diving board? <laughs> <laughs> There's actually just a crucifix with a plank. <laughs> <laughs> so 12 people are prosecuted from things ranging from like illegal gun possession to voluntary manslaughter. They just wanted to charge anything. They did, yeah. And they... Literally. I think all of them, yeah, <laughs> all of them got convicted and they said that like they would often fuck with them. Like one of the guys that was convicted of voluntary manslaughter said in Le he was locked up in Leavenworth. He said they would aim a an industrial fan into his cell oh just God. to fuck him up with cold air. Dude, Jesus. Bet you wish you were in that fire now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Now, there there are different reports. Some say that David Koresh died from, he burned alive or smoke inhalation, and other reports say that he was shot in the head. By himself or by law enforcement? Nobody knows. Shot in the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of his songs. <laughs> Posthumously released. <laughs> On a weird note, his mom says was one of the people who said she had no idea how he dies and she's not even sure that the remains they gave her were David Koresh's. And I believe it was Did they give her a, a an urn full of ash or a crisp body? <laughs> what are the remains? They gave her a Koresh on a Barbie. <laughs> oh man. But dude, I believe it was two weeks after the siege. David Koresh's mother was stabbed to death by her sister. What? Yeah. Her was own that, sister. Her own sister. Was that because the sister had like family in the compound as well? 
It was an argument. Uh, it was a beer fueled argument where the mom said Miller Lite tastes great, and the aunt said it has less filling. <laughs> both are true. <laughs> they so they both should no have been stabbed, reason. you piece of shit. <laughs> no, no, nobody should put the blades away. Unless you're trying to shotgun the beer, then stab that little spot, and then, you know, Jake, slurp what, it down. What alcohol do you think it would take for you to get you to stab somebody? Oh man, um, if I'm driving, <laughs> any any alcohol. Uh, but I should, probably shouldn't do that. Um, that is bad. Um, yeah, no, probably just. Like O'Doul's or something. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one that does it for you, John? Bud Ice. Ooh, <laughs> baby. That, that makes me think of throwing up when I'm 19. Yeah, that shit is yeah. nasty. Although I will say this. I had a job that I would have to walk, I think it was eight miles home from, in fucking 2009, maybe. And one of my motivators was that I would reach a place called the Frontier Saloon two thirds of my way home. And I would get myself two 24 ounce Bud Ice. Whoa. Wasted by the time you got home. Oh, dude. There was, it was, I was crying nights. <laughs> Mike, were, was the actual walk, was it actually eight miles or did you get drunk and walk an additional <laughs> six miles? That could have been the case. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was eight because I worked in media and I don't want to give away where I am now, yeah. but I'm going to give away my address at some point in this podcast. Yeah. I can just feel it. If you want to know Mike's address, all you have to do is ask. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but man, what a motivator. The taste of those sweet beers, baby. Oh, <laughs> man. You threw up though? From being like No, 19. I would throw up when I, when I was drinking them. When I first started drinking Bud Ice, we would always get a case of Bud Ice and a case of Zima. And we would have basement parties yeah. at my friend Tim's house. He was 21, and I think I was 16. Th this is never a Whoa. sense you want to say. It's crash <laughs> all over again. But he was... Uh, Malesh. I, I, actually, I, Jake, it's funny you say that because oh, there, was, no. there was one yeah, it's time... it's funny you say Malesh. There was one time where we had smoked weed together, uh -huh. and I don't know if it was just weed because like, it fucked me up really bad. I felt like I couldn't move. And I was in the backseat of the car, and this guy was like nuzzling me for the entirety of the ride. Your friend Tim? And I felt like there was nothing I could do about it. Is his friend is Tim still your buddy? Uh it's not the guy I do a podcast with on Sunday nights. <laughs> yeah. No, dude, I haven't spoken to this guy in probably ever since he nuzzled you. Actually, no, I, I should say this. Actually, when, no, he nuzzled me last year during the uh, Super Bowl. No, when my Aunt Pat died and left me the five G's, I saw him at Best Buy and I bought him a video game. <laughs> Why? Be Just because you had the money? Jake, when I got it, everybody's got it. He's a, baby. a generous man. guy, man. Man. <laughs> what video game? Did he choose? He did. I'm I told him to pick out whatever he wanted. I felt like I was taking my son. <laughs> I'm going to send you my except, Amazon wish list. Except it was a man five years older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we would have so much fucking fun. It was just like the ultimate basement parties. We had body pain. <laughs> Pin the tail on my badonka donk. <laughs> <laughs> you spin the bottle. <laughs> Were you basement party guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. Seven minutes with Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Suck and blow, Tim. <laughs> what about you, Fermi? Are you sucking off anybody at 18? <laughs> no. No, actually, nah, no. <laughs> Wait no. a second. No. <laughs> no, I was just like, uh, not, not that. Not, not a dude. Just Tim the uh, bottle. I was already, I was getting rowdy, like, early. You talked about this the other night. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have to get back into it. Please don't. I yeah. think Tell this episode's going to be on YouTube for yeah. free. Yeah, no, that's why I'm stopping. Yeah, Yeah, you can go on about you. You can talk about well, hey, all the guys you ever sucked off in John, your whole fucking life, John buddy. Nukeresh. I won't stop you. John Newkoresh. <laughs> uh, yeah. He had child pride. Um, all right. Okay. That's not funny. I've choked on this podcast, and now I'm choking on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, those were the fucking days, man. <laughs> was uh was McVeigh after that? It's, Almost as a result of that, right? Yeah, dude. It's funny you bring him up because yeah, McVeigh said he was inspired by 
the way the government treated the, David. Yeah, Koresh. he was pissed off at the government yeah. for those actions, which is like although Timothy McVeigh was enough of a psychopath as to where I think he might putting pickles on his that. hamburger at McDonald's yeah. probably could have got him to blow a building up. And he's the one that like put it right in front of like a daycare, right? Well, there was a daycare inside the federal building. Yeah, yeah. and like a bunch of. Innocent children. I mean, everyone was innocent, obviously. But if you work for the American, for the federal there? government, yeah. maybe you're not. Oh, so. Yeah, they had a government. There. Yeah, they had a government in that. Daycare. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a child-run government, St- student government. <laughs> yeah, a lot. There was no sharing. Uh, that's crazy. So that was the Unabomber, Timothy McVeigh. Was that a different one? That's a different guy. That's Ted Kaczynski. He's another stinker man. Okay, that's the Oklahoma City Oklahoma, bombing. Okay, man, so many stinkers. There are, yeah, uh, well, McVeigh's an obvious thinker, but Ted Kaczynski, man, he's 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 a scary human being. Uh, what? How did he go about it? What was it like? A giant um, cardboard package that he was sending, or is it like a letter bomb or some shit? Edible arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> All this fruit's gone bad. <laughs> this fruit is ticking. <laughs> He would send all kinds of shit, and on top of that, too, he was a big uh, creeper around her. Like, there were, I remember reading a story about a woman and her husband who had a cabin on the property next to his, and she would catch him, like, peeking at her through the windows. Okay. I'm so glad I did. I was going to say that I can relate to, and I'm so glad I didn't. (laughs) Actually, I did, uh, screw it. I did see, uh, I did see boob in my neighborhood. (gasps) That happened once. Through a window. Through a window. Yeah. Buddy. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't looking for it. It's just you, that, they, that's they how it happens. They throw it out there sometimes, man. Sometimes yeah. you just see it. I went. I went. Sometimes to you a- just stare at the right window for forty-five, <laughs> fifty minutes, and you see it. I went to pick up a gyro the other night with my wife, <laughs> and she sat in the car while I went in to get it. And I came in. She's like, "The lady in that window is naked." I was like, "What are you even talking about?" She's like, that window, she points to it. And I saw a lady walk past, but I didn't get to see any tit. Uh huh. So I was like, uh, I should probably start the car now, <laughs> keep it moving. But the entire right, time. What's going on? This thing won't start. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what I saw. You're I, using a butter knife, yeah. Mike. <laughs> Why are you eating the steering wheel pussy? <laughs> I'm honking the horn with my tongue. <laughs> Come on, walk past again. <laughs> Throwing giant rocks at her window. <laughs> you got your hazards on. I throw the gyro at her window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I saw that dude, I was walking my dog, and my dog just strolls. Mm. Like he doesn't keep a pace. He's just like, you know, I'm gonna smell everything in this yard. It's his. It's his walk, pal. He's yeah. allowed to do that. <laughs> and that's what. Yeah. So I'm just like planted you sh- there. And you I'm should be like, a dog attorney, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I couldn't move for like 30 more seconds. I'm like, please don't look out the window. Please don't look out the window. That is not my camera out. I tell, <laughs> tell my wife about it. I tell my wife about every boob I see. Oh, Jake, you can't yeah. do that, man. Attorney at Paul. <laughs> yes, uh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you did tell, you told your wife you saw a boobage? Dude, immediately. <sighs> One time, okay. It so, ain't a lie so, if you just keep it to your fucking self, dude. <laughs> One, so this is good. One time I was, I live in a, it doesn't matter. There's a, a girl who lives next door and we're very, our doors are very close. Mm-hmm. I was in the bay. I think I was coming back from here one night. Okay. And, or Don't maybe, put this yeah, on me, Furman. I mean, you did this. I was after a show or whatever. And I'm just sitting in my car. You know, I don't know if you guys ever like when you drive home, you ever just like sit in your car for like an extra minute and you're just like. No, just there's been a lot of car jackings in my neighborhood. Yeah, that's true. I will say this. It was at probably my unhappiest. Well, I'm very happy, Mike. Okay. How dare you? Uh, I'm not insinuating that. <laughs> so I'm not inferring it or whatever fucking John's can. words were. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, within two minutes or ten minutes of me sitting in my car, this other car comes flying in. It's not my neighbor's car. It pulls up next to me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And it's a, it's a car full of her friends, her, like, young, like, Decent looking friends. I'm like, all right. I've seen cool. this movie, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and then the girl comes out who I hadn't seen. They, it was her and her boyfriend lived there. Hadn't seen the boyfriend in like a month. Didn't, wasn't expecting anything. Just thought he was working. She comes out. And apparently, they, I guess they had a breakup because she was dressed very nicely. Again, this is free on YouTube, so I have to watch myself. You know, nice ripped jeans and all that stuff. And as she starts walking out, all the girls in the car go, woo, woo. And then one goes, trying to get that dick. <laughs> 
And as she's saying that, I'm opening my heart door. Were you like, like yup? <laughs> Furman, Furman uh, Retardo. <laughs> yeah, call me Ricky. <laughs> no, dude, I just, uh, it was incredible. And I went up and just told my wife immediately. And then every time Jake, we see her, that? we say it. We don't say it to her. Like, what do you say? Trying to get that dick. Trying to get that dick. <laughs> well, that's a funny thing to say yeah. or to tell your wife. But yeah, you're you keep titting to see yourself, tits. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got them all right here, buddy. <laughs> They're just for me. Take them out for me. Undo your pants. Let me see them titties. <laughs> <laughs> the titties stay here, pal. <laughs> So it was the first time I ever saw porn. I, I, me- I immediately ran and told my mom. No, Jake. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? Dude, it was Jesus crazy. Do you guys remember Christ. Prism? Yeah. Why am I dude, that, dude, all this, by the way? Jake, that might have been my first one, too. I saw yeah. a movie called Burning Snow on Prism. Oh, uh, dude. See, that's the get you with the title. Mm-hmm. Mine was Wild Cactus, right? <laughs> Starts in the desert, very slow pan. I'm like, what is this movie, Wild Cactus? I've never about? seen a desert so wet in my life. <laughs> And they show, they cut, they, they pan into this house. And it's very, John, it's very hot in the house. I can tell because the refrigerator and freezer doors open because they're trying to cool. And then this very sweaty woman comes in. And I'm like, oh my God, she's, she looks hot. She has fans going and everything. She must like, have gone on one hell of a hike. Yeah. She goes into the freezer. I'm like, what's she doing? She's figuring around the ice, cubed ice, pulls mm-hmm. one out. I'm like, what's she going to just eat ice? That's weird. And she unbuttons her shirt and starts rubbing it all over her nipple for, for like 10 minutes while like a saxophone plays. And it's just like slow pan shots. I'm like, this is the best night of my life. And I'm like, I got to tell my mom about this. <laughs> <laughs> she got home like an hour later. And like, I don't even know. I think I blacked out after seeing that. Were you rubbing ice on yourself in the kitchen? <laughs> it's not doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, that's how I learned nipples can get hard. Like from would, her or from yeah, you trying yeah, yeah. it afterwards? <laughs> no, from your mom's reaction? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> just see the girl on TV and then just, you know, I was like, whoa, whoa look at that. And it's like, it was like, it's like her nipples got boners. And then like, I went and it worked on me too. <laughs> How just, long were this lady's nipples that it was that <laughs> obvious? No, they weren't long. They were, they were nice. They were very, uh, the supple the word, I guess. I don't know. That sounds like the creep word. But anyway. So my mom came home and we used to have the com- computer room in the basement. She's just playing Not anymore, like, baby. <laughs> <laughs> she's just playing like jazz ball or something. And I go downstairs and I'm like just trying. I'm like, mom, I saw a movie. I saw like this lady put ice on her boobies. How old? I was probably. 23. <laughs> it was the night before my wedding night. Uh, <laughs> it's my son's second birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like in first or second grade. All right. Furman. Yeah. And I mean, I tell her this in great detail, and the whole time she's just glued to the computer, <laughs> just playing like. A true gamer. Yeah. Just like, uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And just like did not care at all. I was like, ah, oh, man. Yeah. All right. Well, at least you didn't get like in trouble, or and it's not like a weird nope. memory of her trying to explain how tits get hard. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> God. That's not a thing. Thank yeah. you, Furman. She handled it, I think, the best way you could. Just to like Nora. Yeah. yeah. All right. right. You to become an adult yeah. pervert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great move. Prism. I feel like that was a Cinemax's game. This is, Prism was yeah. basically just an HBO. Yep. It was like, right. yeah, like local HBO. Okay. Because, yeah, HBO was, has to have tits, right? The cat house or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They pull yeah. out some tits on taxi cab confessions sometimes, right? They Dude, do. People would like get full on have sex. And in the they, cab? Yeah. I feel you. Yeah, okay. I remember like, that. Like, I mean, it's not like a bang bus or anything. Right. Like they don't that. show penetration, but yeah, uh, but you, just you know what's strangers. happening. Why did yeah. you say that like a Marx brother? <laughs> 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 he was watching Fuck Soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut. <laughs> No, yeah, you'll have to explain it to me after the show's over. <laughs> Marx, there's like a bunch of Marx brothers behind like a little white girl. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> a little white woman. Let's just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching Burning Snow. That might have been the first porno ish movie I saw. And I was. Asleep. It's so funny that you remember the names of these. Too. I'll never forget because it was a similar reaction. Like, I could not understand what i was seeing yeah but i knew that i could not turn away from it yeah i knew because i was i was sleeping at my aunt's house 
and she would sleep on the couch. She had like a sectional. She would sleep on one side, and mm-hmm. uh, I had a bedroom, but like I would often fall asleep on the Watch other TV, sectional. Yeah. yeah. We fell asleep probably watching the fucking Flyers or Sixers. And um, I woke up in the middle of the night and Burning Snow was on. <laughs> and I was just like, did you see the credit or the titles card? Is that how you know the name? Yes. Okay. Yeah. At the end. Because it was not like well, a TV well, guy, a TV guy uh, too. channel. She, oh. well, well, no, she Old had school. she had like the flip TV guy. Yeah. You couldn't hit the but, info. Jake, on the now that I'm remote. saying this, I did. I told her and my mom, too, because I remember them laughing about it. I told you, dude. It's yeah. And it became a joke. And it wasn't like how that. old do you think you were? Maybe the same age. Yeah. Damn. I remember because now now that I'm talking about this out loud, I remember them it being like a running joke between my mom and my aunt. And then eventually my sister got onto it, like, yeah, he's probably watching Burning Snow. It's like Oh my god, they even <laughs> used the <laughs> title to fuck yeah. on you. Yeah. <laughs> but I was yeah, I remember watching that and Revenge of the Nerds too. <laughs> <laughs> and Revenge of the Word Revenge of the Nerds like wasn't as bad as Burning Snow, but there was a lot of titties. Are there really? Yeah. 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 Oh shit. Fuck yeah, dude. I'm gonna go rent <laughs> nerds. Imagine going and paying nine ninety nine to rent Revenge of the Nerds instead of just beating off to Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's tits in here. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta dig for them a little bit. You'll find tits. You'll get them. <laughs> I believe you. I already have them. <laughs> Yeah, I actually tell my wife anytime I see my own tits. <laughs> you're not going to believe this. I still got them. I was eating a gyro. <laughs> Every time I get out of the shower. Hey, hey, come here, come here. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Which is strange because I know she doesn't tell me when she sees dick. Dude, I saw a, a crazy video of what's going on with uh, the, a very sad situation in Ukraine. Uh, but the the way Ukraine soldiers are like, people are dealing with looters during this time. Have you guys seen this Mm-mm. video? They're like, apparently they're they're saran wrapping them to poles. Oh, that's pretty funny. That's awesome. Then they pull their pants down. Yes. So their dicks out. They put something in their mouth to kind of so they can't like yell for help or anything. But like, well, I mean, what are you gonna say? Come look at my dick. <laughs> Please, someone, come look at my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Please come help but close your eyes for Christ's sake. <laughs> eyes up here. <laughs> Don't look at my dick. <laughs> I've never done a Ukrainian accent before, That's but really I really good. Say, dude. I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Are your windows open? <laughs> Your neighbor's about, you're about to get a knock on your door. Uh, I heard there's something I need to look at. <laughs> the property values are plummeting in this fucking neighborhood thanks to this goddamn window being open. <laughs> that That is a very funny prank. Is uh, is Bam Margera leading the troops out there? <laughs> yeah, is Jeff Germain directing this war? Yeah, we got General Zelensky on the ground with his pants around his ankles. He's about to get up for work, but he has no idea what he's in for. <laughs> Dude, I was like, there's no way this is a real thing because they're showing it happening to one guy and then the camera turns and there's another guy with his dick already out. I was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> More than one way to skin a cat, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How much are tickets to Ukraine? <laughs> <laughs> they got to be pretty cheap right now, right? <laughs> Are they are they saran wrapped below the waist or is it just their no, arms? The torso, so like up here. Ah, uh, but so, dick out. Yeah, dick and are their arms out. contained? Yep. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. otherwise you just unpeel it. Man, so they'll get out eventually. What'll what'll get you saran wrapped? Stealing anything? Yeah, I think they were just they were trying to deter looters, from what I read. Which it you got to be a real Ukrainian piece of shit to use this time to get a. Free Samsung 65 inch UHD 4K <laughs> available now. <laughs> Zinsky's <laughs> television <Crazy Zinsky's. laughs> prices were already low, but now these prices are Ukraine. <laughs> Damn, so that reminds me like, John, we gotta get Saran wrap for Jake. 
Oh, please don't. No, we're not doing that. And we should play a game. Actually, I shouldn't do that. We should play a game where a loser gets saran wrapped and gets their dick out. I'm sorry to just instantly volunteer you for that, Jake. That was rude of me. I'm we to don't a- have to put the dick out Why? in public. I'm going to have to sew a dick on top of my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then, John, what are people paying for? What are we going to do it? They're paying for the jokes, not to see our penises, Mike. Well, have you seen our penises? Because <laughs> I have. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> God damn it. Fine. After, I'll show everyone my dick. After seeing our dicks, we should be charging $5 a month. <laughs> if I lose, I get to wear uh, VR goggles so I can watch porn and stay rock hard the whole time. All right. I'm not showing. I'm growing for this crowd. <laughs> Are you a VR porn guy? Not yet, but the future is around the corner, my friend. <laughs> Dude. As soon as I find 400 bucks. Dude, we'll put the VR porn goggles on you, then you go tell Jake's mom about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I tell you uh-huh. what. She's playing the same game, but in a VR helmet. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> titties you don't say <laughs> Did I, tell you, I put on those vr goggles not uh like when i was on vacation mm-hmm. and they had a test setting where it's like oh you can just like dance with a robot like it's fun and i started dancing with the robot and the robot had moves i'm like oh boy <laughs> i don't like that this is awakening me with this robot because it just looked like a robot it looked like an r2d2 mm-hmm. or something but then it started twerking but then <laughs> it had some hip movements and i'm like oh man <laughs> I'm so glad you're a robot and not a person. Did you ask it if it needs input, Jake? <laughs> Be honest. No. But I, no, no, no. But it is forever saved in my my memory brain. Did my you memory. pull down your pants and the robot told you you have a short circuit? <laughs> I had a hard drive, Mike. <laughs> you guys are fucking killing it. Keep going. Man. <laughs> yeah. It's like a tennis match over here. <laughs> it's a tennis match. <laughs> And I am in love. <laughs> it's Tina's Williams. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so uh, Little Dicks, uh, Murder. What else do we want to talk about tonight? Uh, Our little ass dicks. <laughs> yeah, I can keep talking. I can talk about these dicks all <laughs> night. Where do we get saran wrapped if we lose this competition that we're never going to do? Ukraine, dickhead. What are we? Oh, doing? all right. I thought we were going to do it down in the fucking Lou Turk's parking lot. Oh, I'll be doing that in my neighborhood, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ukraine behavior. <laughs> we'll do it at Onyx then. <laughs> you point out, you just, he said Lou Turk's, and you're like, yes, I don't do it in my neighborhood. <laughs> just I think you've like, referenced Lou Turk's enough for yeah. people to yeah. I'll never know s- that you're in the area. I'm never going to set foot in Lou Turk's Gentleman's Club again. Because of your last experience? No, they just classed it up. They it looks made it nice. But you went in there to see the class up, right? I did, and I hated it. Right. So that's your last experience, yeah. you fucking dickhead. Were you like a John Taffer walking in? You were like, this is not disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Slop it up. <laughs> I, I was stunned when I saw the upgrades they had made. They put, they put a lot of money into it? They did, man. They had lights. <laughs> yeah was it too bright in there now like could you see too much before or? they had just one of those extension cord lights dog it was just bare bones fucked up years yeah. ago and then one day i went in there there were mirrors everywhere there were different rooms what kind of chairs were there before they made it nice just were they like cafeteria <laughs> chairs no it's just regular like bar stool chairs even is this place only uh, only seating around the bar, or is dude, there little you know, it used tables to be. off it was to the like, side? Dude, it was like banquet chairs, like those black restaurant you chairs. You can stack them. Yeah. Yes, yep. with the padding on the back and the and the. That's what I remember the seat. them being. I remember that's sitting what I was at the bar, and that's the only seating that I remember. Almost was. like it would be a fire hall. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, was yep. just, it was just bare bones, Speaking and it was of great. fire hall, one, the one time that I was in there pre- uh, ever, but pre-renovation- uh, they had a folding table with an open roast beef buffet mm-hmm. just in the middle of the day. And that's all? There was no tablecloth on the folding table. Is that the only um, how I knew it was food offering? Food. That's not exactly a buffet. Yes. I was, don't know that now, but back then, yeah, it was just, they would have was, like some kind of yeah. just one chafing tray. You could help yourself to. It was two trays. 
and then two empty trays with just the rolls in them. Yeah. And then they had a plate of cheese for you to take by your hand. Of course. Put on the roll. And then they had um, Worcestershire, or not Worcestershire, but the <laughs> horseradish, uh, which is made with, right? <laughs> Can you say that again, Jay? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nah, nope. Nope. You heard my mouth get the zapples. <laughs> So there was a back room before, and there still is. There's uh, they, they also had really good baked ziti. Oh wow! Yeah. Now? No, but no, they back did? then. Okay, yeah. But was that uh, next to some roast beef, or was that yeah, the only yeah, offering that yeah. night? Okay. Maybe they were out of baked ziti when yeah, I was. Yeah, you missed the mm. pasta portion. So of they the threw the rolls on top of the. We used to have our uh, union meetings there. Wow! Wow! Yeah. When what union was airport. that? The IAM, <laughs> International Association of uh, Man. It's the IAM ruining my life. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, what did you used to do? You used to be a baggage handler. <laughs> <laughs> that was the job, but we were in the machinist union for some reason. Ah, yeah. all right. Again, a little machine head at Turks. <laughs> it's better than the rest, John. <laughs> um, okay, so now. Actually, that's probably I what I would gotta, say. I just got to stop. When you were fucking that robot, out. that's what you should have been said. Getting that. some machine head, and it's better than the rest. Damn. Because <laughs> robots do like to be flattered. Damn. <laughs> it did You're going to make it. <laughs> at one point, it did go from green to red. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, is there an uh, they charge money to get in? cover free now they do i don't know if they did before but the huh. last time i went i remember paying 20 bucks Oof. It's a lot, and yeah. it's the same they'll come around to you and you can throw yeah. them at the before stage you could yeah. buy the stripper for 20 bucks the dancer i'm sorry yes they're stripping right you're saying stripped mm -hmm. yeah yeah where do you think the are, are they, comes from pal i know it's out of philadelphia county so i don't know if it's the same law if they serve alcohol are they also allowed to remove their bottoms no i think it's just topless okay is, is that it? I can't remember. Yeah. And then if it's, it's BYO, you can show uh, your pussy and asshole. <laughs> <laughs> That's you should be a lawmaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you say that again? <laughs> For strippers and dogs. It's the same practice. Show an ass. <laughs> well, early he was a lawyer for dogs. Now he's a lawyer for strippers. Stripper law. In either case, just rub my face in it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hit you with a newspaper, Mike. <laughs> You're acting up. Put me down. <laughs> <laughs> rub my belly. I got worms, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I thought you guys were good boys. <laughs> I do hate strip clubs, though. Yeah, me I, neither. I don't like being bothered. Honestly, like you too. My ideal scenario is haunting a strip club. <laughs> so you would have died in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And now you never have to pay cover again. So, <laughs> Do you think anyone's ever had a funeral in a strip club? Oh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's just been like people like like who work there? Or do you think it's like, yeah, you think it's they like do? Yeah. That, honestly, there, there's pro that's probably how they haunt a strip club. They probably tell the girls they're beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, Jake, that's what happens. That's how it happens, Jake. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's simply how it's done. <laughs> oh, man. The lap dances to Ava Mar Ave Maria. <laughs> oh, dude, the one out, uh, uh, Show and Tell is probably the most disgusting strip club yeah, in the world. That's where I have most of my experience. Best, yeah. Dude, I'll, I'll never forget the, the first time I went there. So you, can, you could go to like private rooms when the show bar isn't open. Okay. You go to private rooms, and it's like usually the off night where like the show bar is not open. So I go there with my buddies. I'm like 18 years old, and I have a wad of ones in my pocket from working at a bingo hall. And I go back there. The lady's reading off the menu. And it's like, all right, dude, I got no money for any of this shit. So the only thing that like you can afford to do is like beat off. Like they'll stand over you while you beat off. And like at this time, like I've never had a girlfriend. I've never had any kind of like experience with a lady and i'll just never forget this lady like hovering over me she's like you see that clit i was like i don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't know 
she was very kind. And when I took out my wad of one, she's like, oh, what are you, a waiter? I was like, no, nah, I work at a bingo hall. Oh, man. <laughs> well, what's, what do you mean work at a bingo hall? Were you calling numbers or were you just playing bingo? No, <laughs> at my old high school. Used to sell swag, right? Merch? Yeah, I would sell like uh, bingo cards. So when people would come in, they would pay for like a packet of okay. cards that would get them like, I guess, a certain number of games. And then yeah. you could buy extra games. Was this like a hustle or you were doing this for like... No, it's for my school. Okay. Now, truth be told, virtually everybody that worked there was stealing a ton of money. <laughs> but you're stealing it's from the church, so it's Yes, yeah, so it's okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a fundraiser that costs money. That's it. <laughs> oh, dude, one of my favorite memories was my boy Steve. Like, this motherfucker was always on the take. And he's the one that blew it up for everybody because everybody was cool. We were all getting a ton of money and... They just didn't account for anything. So they, I don't think they even care because they were making so much money too. The school yeah. was. But I'll never forget this one night where they became suspicious and Steve had on these mesh shorts. And you know those rip them things that you that you buy? You rip the, them open and it'd be yeah, like three reveals. cherries, mm-hmm. shit like that. Well, Steve would sell those. And he had on these mesh shorts one night. We were about to like lock up for the night. And it seemed like a fucking thousand of them came spilling out the bottom of his mesh shorts because he had Open them tucked or in, closed closed because he had them tucked in his waistband. So the grift was you would say like, "Oh, this lady won a hundred bucks," and give the rip. Meanwhile, you would just be in the bathroom opening a million of them until you got winners. Yeah. And then Steve came in one day. We would all wait outside and wait for our boss to come to the door to let us all into the school. One day, Steve pulls up in a fucking bright red Mitsubishi 3000 GT. And he's 16. And they're like, wait a minute. He bought a fucking car off of this grift? Dog. I, dude, Cash. Every, every fucking weekend, I would work Fridays and Saturdays. And then on Sundays, I would have my mom drive me to Strawbridge and Clothier. And I would just get like hundreds of dollars worth of Tommy Hilfiger gear. Damn. It Your mom didn't awesome. think something was up? She didn't give a fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> she was playing like the same... Video game Jake's mom was. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you call it? Jezebel? Jazzball? Jezebel. Yeah, they were working the same mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shout out to Straw, but just dude. Oh, I love that story. Hitting the cologne section. Oh my God. Mm. Spraying up before oh, you. Dude, I'll never forget. I, I went there to, to pick out an outfit specifically to go see the 1996 women's gymnastics team at the Spectrum. You are the biggest creep I think I might have ever <laughs> met in my whole entire life. Did you see Carrie Strug? I did. Wow. The whole squad was there. Carrie Strug, Amy Ta- Amy Chow, Amanda Borden, actually, I sent fan mail to, oh and she God. sent me something back. Mike, don't name all of them. Dominique Dawes, Dominique Mochianu, J.C. Phelps. You only get two more until you're fucking certified creep. Shannon, what was her last name? Oh, God, don't say it. I can't think of it, John. <laughs> you're lucky. don't know it. Thank God. Give me a minute. I'm going to think of it. I know so many of them. <laughs> Damn, I can't. You're lucky. I can't think of this lady. It's Shannon something. Wow. You only fucking knew 90% of the team. Yeah. <laughs> well, there were seven. There was Kerry Strug, Amy Chow, JC Phelps, <laughs> Dominic Goss, Dominic Mociano. There's two I don't have. It was Shannon something. <gasps> and then, fuck, there was one other one. Did you have Kerry a, Strug. Uh, Did I name her? He oh. named her five times. <laughs> Like in the back of your closet, tucked away, is there a USA Olympic tracksuit from '96? <laughs> There's not. Although I did have a I, fake backstage pass. <laughs> were, were they in Philly? Where were they? After they won the Olympic gold medal, they they, they had, did like Disney on Ice tour. They did, yeah. They swept the nation, and they're just like, all right, we can monetize this. Yeah, and they would they sell out. merch at the events. They did, yeah, yeah. Dude, my entire bedroom looked like fucking Ray Finkel's bedroom. Jesus, with these young girls. You were dude, of I age, was young right? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was fucking. I was they were probably your age or a little older. Oh, dude, right? I was. I was seventeen. So this is after your Beauty and the Beast phase. Uh, two years after. Well, maybe three years after. Did it start with you seeing Disney on ice and then gravitate towards the Olympics after that? Uh, I think I remember seeing Disney on ice as a kid. I, I think so. Guarantee it. But <laughs> you have pictures when, of it in your wallet. Oh, they're gymnastics. They're not ice skating. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, they're flipping, baby. Yeah. I knew Carrie Strug was a flipper, but it's but they're both weird to do at 17. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you looking them up, Danny? Yeah. It's Shannon Miller. Miller. Yes. I, he said it exactly the same time you did. You yeah. Beat you. Yeah. Beat you. I knew it. See it. You're fucked. 
<laughs> I was but trying dude, to save you. I would I would just craft these elaborate <laughs> fantasies. What I would do you is- You just confirmed the, the list that you're going to be on by knowing that last name. <laughs> oh, my God. But, dude, I was 17 at the time. Hold on. What, what are- They're within like a year or two of me. I know. What are these elaborate fantasies you had about the, the U.S. girls? Dog. So what would happen is, <laughs> what would happen is, I would watch the Olympics during the day, and I would also, or no, actually, I would record songs during the day. What so do you mean? I would put a blank tape in my in my uh, fucking boombox and rip them off the radio. Take them off oh, the radio and record okay. them. Yeah. Oh, I, th- I thought we just discovered another layer to Mike. Yeah. You know what? That I would make them myself. We're making no. beats that we've never I heard. Jerry Strug. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon Miller, <laughs> girl, you got me struggling without you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I would record songs off the radio all day, and then I, I'm going to tell you another embarrassing thing about myself after I tell you this. I would record songs on the radio, and then I would also rec- if the events happened during the day, I would record them on the VCR. So there would come a point at nighttime where I would sync up, where I would play all the jams I recorded during the day. While lower watching. the volume of the Olympics and Damn. just hear the music. I would have headphones on. You're doing like Pink Floyd, Dark Side. Yeah, of the exactly. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. Yeah. At the end, you should have seen me hang myself. <laughs> 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 but dude, I was, I was, um, what I deemed a little overweight at the time. I really wasn't. I was probably like 160 pounds. You had a little belly on you. I did, and it's like I feel like it's impossible to shake the thought of yourself being fat mm. once you have that. And at the time, it's like, looking back, it was like, yeah, I was a fucking toothpick. But because I wasn't jacked, right. I viewed myself as overweight. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Like, I was like, I I have to, like, meet these girls. But it was like, I got to be in the best condition I can be if I'm going to meet these girls. So I was like, I got to start running. Now, I lived probably four blocks from, like, a main road. And my goal was to run to this main road and back, which in, is eight miles. Or I'm sorry, eight blocks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> you so, did definitely not walk eight miles yeah. to and from your job if that's what you think eight miles is. <laughs> but so, I was so out of shape that like running this eight box blocks, I would have to take breaks. I would pump myself up by yelling out the words heart of a lion. Which was from? Nothing. <laughs> All right. It was yeah. just, yeah. At least it you was, were an original guy. It was to motivate myself to run that in the hopes that one day I would be able to be a boyfriend to one of these gymnasts. Man, so dude, if, I cannot believe you didn't run in the traffic. If you're just like in the neighborhood, <laughs> you just happen to see a 160-pound kid who thinks he's pudgy yelling to himself, part of a lion on their side, like right out front of their house. Yeah, man. Wow. And dude, that's where my fear of dogs started. Because a, a little yipping dog came running across across a, a lawn while I had my headphones on. It Damn. scared the living shit out of me. So <laughs> to this day, I have like a weird thing with dogs. Do you oh, scream? Yeah. They will, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I hate that yeah. shit. Danny Dubs actually just got yeah. bit just by a dog like that. How was your wound coming along, Danny? Uh, I'm still paranoid I'm getting MRSA. I don't know how MRSA You should works. get that checked out. It's a staph infection. Yeah. Even if you don't work there, you can get it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Is my guy. Is my guy. Yeah. Damn. We should get you to the doctor and we should get you to a therapist after the stuff you've just told us. <laughs> did you keep running though? Did you start getting in shape then? Or did you just start doing handstands? It took, so that was 1996. 1997, I got a job at a health club and I got in really good shape then. Nice. Did you, uh, be honest, when you're screaming Heart of a Lion on your neighbor's uh, sidewalk, two houses down, um, (laughs) did you at any point think like, I'm going to be in the next Olympics and I'm going to win these girls over in Beijing? Most of my fantasy, well, here's where like the fantasies really became elaborate, Jake. Within about, the, the gymnastics fantasy went on forever. I would say that lasted until like 1998. Now, at that point, I had also got into Dawson's Creek. <laughs> so I was in love with Katie Holmes. Yeah, which is like an emotional gymnastics. It I is. It. I've been compared to a fat Joshua Jackson before, so. <laughs> yeah. I can see it. So the two fantasies melded. So it became like a dual fantasy in that I would um, picture myself in Wilmington, North Carolina, where they filmed Dawson's Creek. 
And I would be eating at a restaurant where both the gymnastics team and the cast of Dawson's Creek would be eating. And you see Joey on a pummel horse? Well, dude, no. They would overhear me being so funny. They would be like, oh, my God. Like, who is this guy? Who's the guy eating by himself, making himself <laughs> laugh so hard? <laughs> he doesn't seem crazy at all. He just keeps saying funny things. Who's that normal, hilarious, buff guy <laughs> who keeps ordering mozzarella sticks? <laughs> Yelling heart of a lion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But that came crashing down because like my dad like came up to my room one night. He's like, dude, you gotta do something different. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the the Finkel mm -hmm. room. Yeah. Well that lasted a while. <laughs> but the thing that precip precipitated that conversation was that I wasn't doing anything with my life. Now, the nineteen ninety six Summer Olympics, I had just graduated, so it's like I'm just blowing off steam. I'm not doing shit. Yeah. But yeah. by the time ninety eight rolled around, like I really wasn't fucking doing anything with my life. My life would revolve around episodes of Dawson's Creek. At twenty years old. Nineteen ish. Still seems a little old. To do what? Man. To be that invested in Dawson. I'm in the know. gang. Jake, I never had a girlfriend. Especially when Dude. it's only on like, like two weeks. days, I think yeah. it was. UPN, yeah. right? Yeah. Or WB? Yeah. WB. You remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, boy, you unloaded a lot on me. And then there was one other thing. This this is the last like, I can't take one more. <laughs> John, I need to get this off my chest. I need you to get a heart of a line tattoo for me <laughs> on your chest. So eventually. I, I got a job cleaning air ducts, and I also got a credit card with an extraordinary limit. You could have worked with the, the you know, the Swiss cheese pervert. I could have. What was your credit limit at that point? Well, my aunt, who I watch, the lady whose house I watched burning snow at the apartment, um, she, um, what, what do you call it? Is it co-sign where they get you something yeah. without you having the credit? Yep. So she, I guess, co-signed this credit card for me. Oh, shit. And there, I, I could buy anything. So the day that she I, was responsible, but it was your name, right. and you could build credit off of it. Right. Yeah. I had no idea what building credit she was meant. vouching for. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm still not sure, what dude. I quit my job, and I was like, I got to get on the internet. <laughs> so I went to Best Buy. You've arrived, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I've arrived. So I went to Best Buy and uh, bought the internet. <laughs> <laughs> they only charged me five grand, which I thought was a You're really good deal. Far off. <laughs> the guy was like upselling me left and right to the point where, like, I think the computer I ended up leaving with cost like two thousand dollars. Oh my god! And it was very fucked. I wish I could like find out who that fucking guy was <laughs> and just fucking stab him. He's still sleeping on the pile of money he made up for you that day. <laughs> Dude. And so I got the internet and I brought it home. You're getting a bell. <laughs> yeah, he keeps calling it the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's really a computer. <laughs> That's a gateway. I brought it home and my dad was like, he's like, how much did that cost? I told him, he's like, you had that kind of money? I was like, no, I bought it with Aunt Pat's credit card. He's like, buddy, I had it set up in the kitchen. He's like, buddy, you're going to want to move that up to your room because I wouldn't put a pastor to start snipping wires when she finds out how much that fucking computer cost. So I brought it up to my room and I was going like, how did you access the internet then with AOL, AOL like discs? Yeah. AOL. Yeah. So I would go in chat rooms. The, the chat rooms I primar <laughs> primarily went into were gymnastics based chat rooms. Jesus, and then Mike. Dude, Jake, I'm a teenager too. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, no, you said 19. Yeah. So I'm a teenager too. <laughs> He's using teenager awfully loose here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm an advanced teenager. Let's start here and you say I'm a legal adult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Now here's here's where um we get past that. So I become obsessed with Ashley Judd. So 1998 is when I finally leave Dawson's Creek and the USA gymnastics team in the dust. I become obsessed with Ashley Judd to the point where I start um a I don't I don't know it wasn't Microsoft Word I don't think I had that on the computer but it was like a data processing um, document that I would store this information in gotcha. where I kept like a journal dedicated to just me speaking about Ashley Judd. God, what I wouldn't give to read these files. Yeah, there's no way you have that information still, right? I threw that computer in a sewer. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's some just oh. four mutant turtles reading this stuff right there. The same sewer that I threw that into was um. <laughs> what kind of sewer are you throwing a fucking yeah. computer tower into? The same one the Ninja Turtles put up five bucks to hand to the pizza guy to. <laughs> Dude, that sewer I threw. I threw that computer and then a fake pussy that I left behind when I moved out of my house. I realized it was the only thing I left in my closet. I left it in a black leather bag. And I was like, oh, my God, I left it there. So I drove back and I got it and I threw it in the sewer, which is on the corner of my parents' house. This is like early stage fake pussy stuff. Yeah. It was just it, it looked like. So it's not biodegradable. Taco. It's like it's like full like a like a plastic or a rubber block. Yeah. It's, it's just it just looks like an a big entire taco. fucking computer, dude. Yeah. That's that true. is a little bit worse for the environment You're than right. a fucking pocket pussy. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Just saying, rubber lasts a long time. <laughs> yeah, but I, I re- the the one journal entry that I remember distinctly was one after I watched the movie Kiss the Girls. Can you tell us some snippets? I can. The one phrase that I remember writing is that I wrote that uh, Ashley Judd quote set this motherfucker off. Oh my! Damn! God. So you were writing in the in the wigger tense? I was. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh man! Mm-hmm. Hey. F U C K A, motherfucker. Yes. yes. Now then, it progressed past that to I remember I mentioned I got the job at the health club. Yeah. And no, I got the job at the health club in ninety eight. Should have got the job at the mental health club. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I fried his ass, dude. <laughs> this is where I start to become like kind of like a normal functioning person at this age, is to where like it became a journal dedicated to the Sixers. Because the Sixers worked out at the health club I got a job at. This is just one big long file that shows your <laughs> the your personality <laughs> change from uh, unreasonably obsessed with Ashley Judd. Asking a lot of questions, then he finds the answer. Trust the process. Mm-hmm. Trust the processor. To that point, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I once wore a pair of uh, Iverson shoes. Because they would leave their um their locker room. Oh, like his actual yeah. shoes. How'd he, you get them? He would never wear the same shit twice. Yeah. And they would just leave their shit on the floor of this health club, their locker room in the health club. Most times they would leave the door locked, but mo- a lot of times they wouldn't. And when the door wasn't unlocked, me and the other guys who were towel boys would go in there and just take shorts, socks, and shoes, and sweatshirts, and whatever else they left around. What side did you fit into the he shoes? He was 10 and a half, yeah. Wow. So you kept them forever? Yeah. I don't have them anymore, but insane that you would ever not have them. Here's why: is because I was such a people pleaser that I ended up giving them to my friend Danny. Because after he you said, wore them around a bunch, after I wore them, he said he liked them. I was like, "Well, here you can have my shoes, buddy." Did you tell him you are? He knew. Generous. Well, he ended up getting a job there too. He got fired uh, because uh, he was sniffing the shoes dude, before he put them on. It's the wigger <laughs> version of Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> <laughs> Sister of the traveling Reeboks. <laughs> Take my sneaks, dog. <laughs> but Danny got fired because there was one day where water pressure was low in the health club, and a guy came up angrily to us, like folding towels at the desk. He came up in a towel. He's like, What's going on with the water pressure? Danny's like, I don't know, man, but I could piss on you harder than that water's coming out. <laughs> That's a funny joke. I, I think so, too. The guy went to our boss that said that Danny said he was going to piss on him. What a dildo. Real dildo shit. Damn. Wish I could sniff that guy's shoes. Wait. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> show that guy a picture of my ass. Wait. <laughs> Saran wrap his ass. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I became what I am. <sighs> what a that's my origin fucking story. chapter in the saga of Miguel <laughs> Ranhel. <laughs> the most interesting life of anyone I've ever met. I don't know about that, buddy. No, it is <laughs> it's captivating. It's a white knuckle thrill ride every time. It's a you white hit. trash thrill ride. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, I got to go back and watch Dawson's Creek and see if it still I'm holds up. I'm not sure you have to. <laughs> I'm not sure that you ever have yeah. to rewatch that show ever again. Or write the gymnastics team ever again. <laughs> I'm sure Shannon Miller's pretty upset you forgot her name, though. Yeah, Shannon yeah. Miller, if you're listening, probably change your address, go somewhere, <laughs> hide out <laughs> for a little it. while. Mike's Halo. back. <laughs> now, I did consider taking up gymnastics for a while because 
um, I knew that Dominique Dawes trained in Silver Spring, Maryland, and that was the closest to Philadelphia. Yeah, it's close. And you thought that um, if you trained, she would fall say, in love with me. Uh, upwards of really? 70, 80 miles mm-hmm. away from where she trained. Dude, time out. And she would hear of you? Yeah. Or you would be at a competition together or something? No, we would train at the same place. The confidence, Mike. Were you going to drive that far to yes. train? I considered it. He said he was going to go down there and train. And he said his words was, she was going to fall in love with me. Dude. I want just like an ounce of that confidence. <laughs> I'm not. I sure don't have that it anymore. Do. Jake. Here, here you are. That isn't confidence. It's delusion. A, a completely <laughs> untrained male. Yeah, <laughs> yelling heart of a lion. <laughs> oh man. And these aren't just singular daydreams. These are these are uh, aspirations that you're actively adding on to. They're not oh, just yeah, like yeah. you're not like just mowing the lawn, thinking whatever comes across your brain. You're like. Obviously, you're fucking. You you have a, a word document, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you're actively imagining these things. Yes, yeah. Mike. At any point during uh, this experience, did you uh, like ever consider getting an Olympics tattoo during that? Like after Carrie landed, I don't think so. No, I'm surprised because that with one of the gymnast faces in each of the rings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that is some that is some scary level shit, right? The there. only two that aren't in the rings are the ones that I've killed. <laughs> Why are those two in black and white, and the rest are in color? Yeah, man, incredible, dude. Crazy days. And then I find well, no, after that, I, I I actually started dating a girl from the health club. Um, she was very nice, very sweet, and um. I guess I kind of had feelings for her, and she had uh, she wore like a uh, one of those uh, clotta rings that the Irish wear, and yeah. she turned it to where it's like it signifies you're in a relationship, which I think is inward. What? what? There's oh. like four positions for the clotta ring. Oh, we're, yeah. we're not reneging on this, Jake. Oh. So. <laughs> he said inward. Okay. Yeah. But then uh, at that time, like that spooked me, and then also I thought it would be funny <laughs> if I went to visit my boy Steve at Paris Island. He had joined the Marines, so I thought it'd be funny if we saw each other there. So the combination of being freaked out for having feelings for this lady and then also wanting to make my friend Steve laugh led to me ghosting this poor lady. One of the funniest instances of ghosting. And heading to Paris Island just to say hi to my buddy Steve. Is that, honestly, is that when the the diary stopped? No, I probably stopped before that. Like, after a while. Yeah, the computer was already well in the sewer before you headed to paris island right? yeah the computer set itself on fire before i headed to paris <laughs> island yeah well that's a good a nice little button <laughs> to close this chapter of setting it on fire now look at me i am mike just like mount carmel <laughs> bringing it all around the computer was on fire just like the compound in waco i'm following you yeah. keep keep going. Like Waco, you just do a Texas. fade out on this one, Jake. <laughs> Waco, talk Texas. as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Home of Chip and Joanna Gaines now. Oh, I love them. Yeah, they're they're really bringing Waco around, man. It's a hot spot. Shiplap everywhere. What does that word mean? It's a type of uh, in, interior siding. Shiplap walls, but he calls it chiplap. <laughs> he should. He should. Oh, I thought you said chip lap. No, I said chip lap. Oh, I chip. thought you said chip wrecked. I thought you said you wrote the Chipmunks movie <laughs> and the Squeakquel and the chip wrecked. No, movie. I said that the uh, the computer was set on fire like Waco, the compound, <laughs> the caramel, and melted. Play him off. Let's hear some of that fucking sweet David Koresh chords <laughs> yeah. melodies to fade him it's out. It's on fire. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think this is more than enough information than anybody needed to hear before bed. So I'm so sorry. I'm j- I just want to be open and honest with you. So thank you for that. Now you know why I am and what I am. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's another puzzle piece, but <laughs> uh, something tells me this is a 5,000 piece puzzle we're putting together. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Later. Bye. Especially you, Magnificent Seven. Mm-hmm.